Hello everyone, welcome to jobskillshare.org. Today we are going to continue our Office 365 administration course and today we will talk about uh, company profile and that's what we will basically we'll be talking about more than company profile today a lot of things that we be, because we want to quickly go over some of the things that really you will not be touching it so let's talk about company profile quickly just, just quickly go over it you can change the name of the company address and your phone numbers email and your language so you can do that you can change the theme so let's say for example you put a logo in here you can put a URL back of our image and style stuff also custom help desk uh, this is something important if you put a help desk number in there so people can contact your help desk through um, your portal now the other important thing in Office 365 is um, the shared mailbox and this is something that we're going to talk about um, in a little bit more now because we can add some real-world example to this now shared mailbox are not your licensed um, user accounts they're they're free from Microsoft so let's say for example you have um, Microsoft Office 365 running on in your system you can put as many shared mailboxes um, I don't know what's the maximum but there's no license to it so anyone you can create a group of email you would say like help this at um, you know your company dot com dot org and then you can add people to it they can uh, all of them can access it and you know that can be used as one of your uh, like you know like a box that can be used on a site when people a lot of people message and a lot of people are monitoring it so this is something that you will be using mailbox for that now you can add it through this way Yes, for example, this is going to be your, uh, let's say, your company at dot com. Uh, you put a name in here. You put the email. So let's say if I put a name here, and, and I put this right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead, and you can add members to it and create. Now there is no member, so it really there's nothing I can do with it. But I can add this account right now into my user account, and then just add this shared mailbox and that will be my mailbox and then I can add another person or I can add a group to this whole shared mailbox and it's pretty useful a lot of people use this uh, in their companies because a person might have an email address but then you will have some kind of generic email address that everybody uses for like uh, support or any other you know departments emails so there will be um, all of them will be added to that so it's pretty pretty useful feature from Office 365 and one of the best thing in this is that you don't need to change the password so you can basically add a person to it and then they will be using the link um, once they log into their mail they'll just log in um, open another mailbox type the share box email address and they're in so that means it just eliminate the whole password thing so you don't need to change password for each uh, group or something like that so as you guys can see I have this shared um, mailbox running now a lot, I'm sure people won't be naming it like this it'll be like you know support or something like that a department uh, shared mailbox but what you want to do is uh, um, you, when you have a person you just add it to this and what you do is you do to you go to basically edit more properties and you will see more options in this to how to add people or groups to it and this is what you see and basically you can do mail delegation right here so you can add a full access you can add a person to this um, a shared box or you can add a group to it so if it's like 20 people you can add a whole group and then they will have access if it's one person you will add it and then basically it, it can also show up on their outlook if they are using the Microsoft Office on their machines and they'll, they'll see an add-in uh, on their outlook mailbox usage you can see the uh, last log on here and you'll see um, the space in that so if it's running out of space you might want to go back and kind of check on things that but 45 is a lot of 49 GB is a lot of uh, space for Microsoft you can change the contact information organization email address you can add another uh, basically like an email address SMTP so you could add a different email address pointing to this one so that kind of makes um, if let's say for example something is wrong with the 
department changes their name and then you want to change but you don't want to change the email because you're getting so many emails to that so you can play around with that settings right here mailbox features you could uh, turn off or turn on some of the features like mobile features and things like that um, that's pretty useful other one is the mail uh, the group like say for example if it's a part of some group you can add it sometimes this will be also um, uh, coming from Active Directory if you have ADFS running let's say you have a a Active Directory on your in your system like you know at your job area and you want to alright so let's go back to uh, our shared mailbox so this is a shared mailbox now to open a shared mailbox you basically need to go to your portal so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna type portal.office.com and this is how you will log in so people will go to their mail so you'll see the mail will be right here so you basically click on this little icon right here on the right side and then what you want to do is to click on open another mailbox and here you'll just type decon and let's see if we can find this is the mailbox and we'll just open it now as you guys can see it says bad request I, I think it's not showing up in my screen right now but um, it will you, you will get an error if you haven't added anyone to this mailbox so but if you add it they'll see the same way just like this email address it will open up now one thing you guys can do is you guys can copy um, the address of that mailbox and then next time when you just double click on it it will ask you for username and password you put your username and password and you'll be in directly here without going to this option like this and you open that from there so that's a great thing you, you know you can just can you use this um, a lot of people will be asking can I directly log into a shared mailbox or whatever you call it uh, and then this is an easy way you just copy the link give it to give it to them and tell them I gave you the permission and now you can log in okay and it's make it makes it really super easy when someone leaves the company so you don't have to change the password now you just uh, take them off and everything is good to go so that was about shared mailbox and things like that now meeting rooms there's really not much in meeting rooms you guys can use this a lot of people use Outlook or other methods so it's up to you uh, I mean if you guys if you guys are using it then this is a good feature from Microsoft Office you can just add a meeting room here uh, location you can put a phone number here room capacity and this is basically a little nice tool for them to give you some extra stuff groups let's talk about groups now groups are just like Active Directory groups remember we talked about uh, there are certain groups that some people might be accessing or there are certain groups that is for security reason there are certain groups for fi finance there are certain groups for HR so that's why we have these groups over here now if I add this group and it's a big benefit for groups remember we talked about share mailbox what if there's a 20 people in customer support uh, team there's 20 to 25 people are you going to be adding them single like you know if they need access to that shared mailbox are you, are you going to be adding them like one by one or you can just create a whole big group add those 25 people to that group and then next time whenever you create a mailbox you just add a group to that mailbox and that it that's it you don't have to worry about giving access to each um, uh, each person should have access to this so that's gonna will take you save you a lot of time and just like same like in Active Directory we have groups we have groups over here so to add groups you just click on this little plus sign and then, then it will ask you what do you want to do is this a security group or is this just a group Microsoft Office 365 so it's, it tells you right here collaborate by giving them a group email and shared workspace for concession it also gives you an email address so you so if you send that uh, for example if you add this group and we send the email to that group then to that email address then it basically sends out that um, information to that all everyone in that group so I can create a group email address I can call it a finance IT whatever you can give it a name description 
and is it a public or is it a private group so members can see group content anyone can see content so you guys need to decide then click next and then you'll have a group like this the one we have already some of that right here okay so that's the benefit of group now what kind of calls can you get uh, through groups now most of the time you won't be creating groups sometimes maybe uh, but most of the time it's already created uh, you will get calls like you know we need to add a person to the um, let's say finance team so you click on the finance team here you click on uh, it basically tells you right here what's the email address and then you basically click on uh, quick um, added the settings here when you click on that then you can come to the membership and you can add people in here so that's kind of like the calls for help us you guys will get these kind of calls hey can we add this person to this group or can you take them off from this group because they just left or whatever happened but that's kind of like um, adding people to the group uh, these are the kind of calls you will you'll get message sent to this group have I mean you guys can put moderators in these groups and things like that um, I haven't used these features so I really don't know how it works but most of the time you will be doing the membership part okay so that's groups let's go jump into domains now domains um, if you own your own domain and I'm sure most of the companies do then you will need to set up this and this is something that I did in the beginning of the course so if you guys watch my first video set up office 365 I kinda show the whole DNS and how to point your DNS to your site and stuff like that I went through the whole domain settings so make sure you watch that video and then you will get your own site name here instead of this whole big um, Microsoft one okay so in this video we discussed a lot of things let's just recap what we did we did the setup we did the users things we talked about some adding users deleting users kind of calls that you will get from help desk we talked about the company profile uh, we talked a little bit about imports before um, imports are good if you want to use a PST file that already have and you want to migrate everything then you can use this it's still a currently um, basically in a preview uh, mode so it might work might not work uh, contacts if you have external contacts you want to add that to your system meaning it's not your domain but you want to add other people so then you can use it to send out emails and informations you can use it contacts right here we talked about shared mailbox we talked about meeting rooms we talked about groups and domain so public website is something that let's say if you want to use these uh, two nice uh, Wix and GoDaddy they can um, basically help you out with the if you don't have a website already on so next videos we will jump into billing external sharing and then move on till we finish the whole thing so I'll see you guys in a different video thank you for watching this